Hi right, guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. We are back in the airship. Due to popular demand, I am creating a uh, tutorial, just one, on how to fly an airship. So this is a uh, freeware add-on downloaded from the flight sim called the USS Macon. This is the same one that I used in the Norristown Land Teniso uh, series episode of flying over New Venice, uh, which of course in real life was New York. Now, this is a very large airship. It's one of the largest airships um, ever built. For scale, that underneath of us is a truck. So that kind of gives you an idea of just how large this thing is. I have the sound turned off right now, obviously. Um, so anyway, uh, it is one of the most voluminous ships ever built. Uh, the Hindenburg and the Graf Zeppelin II were both longer, but I'm pretty sure the uh, Macon and its uh, sister Akron represent the most voluminous ships ever built. Uh, not the most designed. There have been airships designed that are 1,100 feet long, and this is coming from real documentation. 1,100 feet long, uh, just massive, massive, massive things, like 500 times the volume of a 747, uh, weighing in approximately 1.6 million pounds, or about as much as the Acela Express, with a capable lifting capacity of about 500 to 600,000 pounds, which is one uh, 747. So imagine something that's 500 times the volume of a 747, a quarter of a mile long or half a kilometer long that is able to lift a 747. Those have never been built, but they've been designed. Uh, so one of the most important things that you need to realize is what the difference between an aircraft, an airship and a blimp is, okay? A blimp is basically a big balloon that is semi-rigid and you permanently fix or attach a control station underneath. So that's what a blimp is. A zeppelin is a fully rigid structure that is covered in cloth to streamline it that has within it contained gas cells which are strung off of the structure. It's very similar to um, to a fuel tank, except in this case it's not fuel, it's a gas called helium, and the gas is lighter than air. Our lifting gas is in fact helium, it's not hydrogen. So if I go outside now, this structure which contains us is not continuous. Uh, it, it's basically a single, a single skin, and underneath that is a rigid metal frame, and strapped to that metal frame are gas bags that contain our lifting gas that we need to fly. That is how an airship is put together. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open up some handy links that are good for understanding more about airships because to really understand and take advantage of all that you can with an airship we should do a, a little bit of reading okay so the first of two URLs here uh, is a technical manual of general airship aerodynamics and basically what this will do is it will teach you the various uh, the various uh, forces involved when you're flying an airship, it's not the same as the four forces that one would encounter when flying an airplane. There's weird stuff, too, called dynamic lift, which is a sort of um, a condition encountered where you have the airship in a slightly vertical direction, and the fact that you have a uh, slope to that actually will force air down under you, and it provides a little bit of uh, lift. It's the exact same thing when you're re-entering in a capsule uh, with a blunt object, you get some lifting reentry 
uh, along with your ballistic flight path. Uh, so it's got all sorts of goodies in there uh, for you to dig through. Don't worry about any uh, warnings about being um, being uh, classified or anything. This is fully released to the public now. Uh, at one at one time, it was extremely uh, extremely uh, contained, but now it's uh, a lot better. So basically, there's you know all sorts of formulas and whatnot in here, um, ways to calculate power coefficients, uh, um, moments of inertia, uh, all sorts of different things. And this will basically uh, give you the mathematics behind what you're basically flying. So it gives you a little bit more uh, understanding of, of what your capabilities are uh, within an airship and uh, how that differs. Okay, so the next uh, one that I could recommend is the K-Type Airships Pilot's Manual. Now, this is, I'm going to go back on what I said, right? Um, a Zeppelin is its own animal. It's not a blimp. Well, even though this says K-Type Airships, it's really a blimp. Uh, again, even though it says it's restricted, it's released to the public. This is a blimp manual, but... It happens to use a control car and gasoline engines, which are pretty similar to the USS Macon. I really looked around for the actual USS Macon manual, and I couldn't really find it. But it kind of gives you all that you need to know. And uh, anything more, you can actually extrapolate using the, uh, using the um, formulas contained in the first link. So anyway... Uh, it's quite a small airship, or uh, blimp as compared with our airship, the USS Macon. Uh, the Macon has, I believe, if I remember correctly, um, 7,400,000 cubic feet. And this has about 400,000 cubic feet. So it's about 16 times uh, less in volume, which would correspond to about... Um, two and a half times smaller, and the length is 785 feet, which is just about three times shorter in length. So, you know, the, 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 um, the weights, the uh, horsepowers, the engines, they're all going to be about a factor of four smaller. But you've got some formulas here that you can also follow, like some things are going to change, other things won't. You can actually find out uh, how much uh, lift will be provided by the helium, which is handy if you want to, you know, be fully realistic about it. Uh, there's takeoff charts for different levels of wind. There's even weight and balance information. And they go, because an airship, weight is everything. It is in a plane too, but in, in an airship, even more so. Um, like, it even goes down to the navigator's table. I, the, the, the table of the navigator weighed 19.9 pounds, and that's very light for a table. If you notice, when we were in the cockpit, they had all sorts of like little circles in the, in the beams. Those aren't for show. Those are actually cut out to save weight, and those cross beams are the structural elements of a control car. They're not, you know, fancy designs. They are actually hollowed out to save as much weight as possible. Um, there's some more information on the engines, uh, how much um, you can inflate the gas bags to, where your pressure altitude is, a lot of other really neat things that you can uh, learn about. And this is all free, like I said. Um, it's not restricted anymore. Here's your uh, RPM and fuel consumption. The general rule with airships is slower is better, um, but you have a range of altitudes. Here's even electrical schematics. Uh, there's also emergency uh, things. Here's a control car, for instance. Electrical load analyses. Uh, it, it really is incredible uh, how much information that this uh, document contains. And it's, it's really helpful for, uh, for flying. Uh, going back to uh, our airship now, um, if you're interested in learning more about airships, and if you're like me, 
You also uh, like the lore surrounding them. Um, I highly recommend a, uh, a, I think it's a three-book series called Airborne by, uh, let me make sure I'm getting his name right. Yeah, it's a three-part series uh, called Airborne. Uh, only the first book is, is called Airborne, but it's, it's basically a... Uh, a uh, trio of uh, sky adventure uh, books that take place on an airship called the Aurora, which, if I remember correctly, is uh, a little bit larger than uh, than the Graf Zeppelin II. It's basically the the length of the Graf Zeppelin II with our um, with our volume that we have now. So it's so it's an even bigger ship than the largest that exists. Uh, it's an adventure series that takes place on uh, on that airship called the Aurora, and they have a um, magical, and I call it magical because there's no such thing, gas called hydrium, which is, you know, helium and hydrogen, which you get when you combine them together. Um, this gas, uh, allegedly called hydrium, provided something like double the double the lift of hydrogen. So as a result, uh, instead of the Zeppelin being mostly empty, uh, it actually contained uh, about uh, two levels of, uh, of passenger, passenger compartments. Uh, the USS Macon weighs something like uh, five or 600,000 pounds, and uh, this, this ship, the Aurora, weighed two million pounds and it was the same it was basically the same volume contained and the same lift capacity if you put helium in it than the uh, USS Macon this is not possible uh, hydrogen is the least dense gas that exists it's a molecular property you can't get any less dense than that or else you'd have an electron soup which would be an extremely dangerous material because you'd essentially have infinitely negative charge. So if you can imagine what would happen, you'd start picking up lightning from every every possible... It, it would basically be like if, if, you, um, if you rubbed all the wool together in a washing machine and then touched it. You, know, you can imagine the static electricity that, that you would get from that thing. So... It's it's not possible as it's put set out in the book, but it's still really fun to learn about it. And given the circumstances, you know, you might have there might be uh, another intelligent species on a planet where instead of it's one bar atmosphere, you know, fifty bars of atmosphere. So your your atmosphere could have something like seventy three um, seventy three uh, kilograms per uh, cubic meter in um, atmospheric uh, atmospheric density, and therefore, if you had hydrogen, yeah, it would have that kind of lift capacity. It'd kind of be like having helium in water, or even air in water, for that matter. Uh, airships are a lot like submarines, actually. If you think about it, right? They can go up and down vertically, like a helicopter, um, but they can also go side to side, and you can combine it. If you tilt upwards, then you can actually get some lift going going upwards through the water. And if you tilt down, then you can uh, sink. Even though you're not adjusting the um, adjusting the amount of uh, lift contained in the craft. All right, let's go fly this thing. Okay, so here we are. Uh, once you load it up, uh, you want to press F1 and then uh, Control Period. And that will uh, set your parking brake. Now, it kind of depends on what your system is like. If it's like mine, um, your computer is too good. And basically, the unfortunate reality of my Microsoft Flight Simulator is you can't simulate the heavier than aircraft. So what we have to do is uh, lower the mass of the craft until it is basically nothing. That comes with a blessing and a curse. So the blessing is because we weigh nothing, it basically takes no speed before we lift off the ground. The curse is we also have extremely small moments of inertia. 
So as soon as there's like any sort of uh, induction of force, you get catapulted, which is what you see here, right? Even though we're we're completely still, you see all this crazy sort of back and forth motion, and there's nothing that we can really do about that because, well, that's just what happens in Flight Simulator. So there's two things you need to do right now. Uh, the first thing that you need to do making sure that your controls are set right. So if you have any rudder pedals, go ahead and disconnect them. Because if you have or disable them, if you have a rudder pedal, the ambiance, even in the rest position, will induce uh, electromagnetic variations. And those variations will induce uh, motion in the craft that uh, will build up and resonate. So you can't do that. Uh, second thing, once you've unplugged those, you need to go to the Alt menu and do uh, Aircraft Realism Settings. And you need to make sure you need to have Auto Rudder checked or else what will happen in my previous using the airship on the aircraft carrier will happen. You'll basically turn over and over and over like a washing machine. Once you've done those two things and you've pressed the period key, then you should have an airship which is slightly bouncing about, like mine. And now you're ready to go. So uh, rather than explain uh, some things about the cockpit, I'm going to go through, go straight through the up ship, and then we'll get uh, above the ground, and we'll get started. And in case you were wondering, no, there is zero wind right now. You know, that buffeting that we're getting, it's realistic if we had, you know, three to five knots. But, um, no, I've cleared all the weather in Flight Simulator. This is what it looks like when it's 2 9 or 9 or 2, 15 Celsius, zero clouds, uh, 41 dew point, um, zero wind, zero wind aloft, unlimited visibility, you get the idea. So I'm going to turn the sound on. It's going to get a little bit louder now. You'll hear the actual sounds of the airship. Okay, so we're, we're running now. Here's our broken throttles showing us that we're an idle. Broken because it'll read full even when you're at 25% throttle. The most important gauge that you need to look at is over here on the left. First of all, I just want to say that there is no cockpit view, right? You can only do this in virtual. So if I come over here, you need to see, there it is right here, this buoyancy gauge. When you load the aircraft, uh, it will come up as a uh, light. So let me go ahead and reset that. I've made it heavy uh, because I don't want the craft to, um, oh my gosh, it's doing it. Yeah, I, I don't want it to do that, basically. That kind of excessive buffeting. Yeah, that's really bad. Uh, actual results may vary. I just want to say that, right? This is not a perfect solution in Flight Simulator. I did not develop this add-on, and I have full respect for the people who did, because supposedly they said it couldn't be done, and... Well, I mean, it's pretty much done. So let's reset this buoyancy. Okay, so this is how your gauge is going to look like when you load the craft up. Um, basically, the way airships operate is they have gas bags. On one side, you have compressed air with, well, it's compressed helium in some gas canisters. Those will feed into the, the gas cells. Um, sometimes they're called bladders. And then uh, on the ends of those, you have valves, and these valves will release the helium into the environment. If I go back outside again, you'll see these kind of vents on the side, and that's what they do is they'll actually release helium as requested. We have 12 non-pressurized holding cells where we can hold the helium. So generally what you can do is you can fill them uh, the gas cells themselves are not rigid. They can expand and contract. That's why they're called bladders. Um, 
So generally, when you're on the ground, you want to have those less filled. So you'll only fill them to about uh, 80%. Hence, your buoyancy is heavy. Um, when in reality, what they would do is you would actually fill it up to about 95%. You, don't, you never want to fill it to 100% because then if you do, you can't ascend. Because as you ascend, if you've done anything with, with uh, high altitude ballooning, you'll know that as soon as you start to ascend, the balloon itself will begin expanding. And uh, if nothing is done, you're either going to open a safety valve uh, to release the helium or you're going to pop. Uh, which is extremely bad. That's uh, actually what did this ship in. Uh, this ship that I'm flying in simulation, the USS Macon, got caught in a updraft in a thunderstorm, was raised above its pressure altitude. The two air bladder or the two helium bladders in the in the tail section busted. Oh my gosh, we're losing it. The the two. The two in the tail section busted. Uh, the the tail became heavy. Uh, it started pitching up until the point of stall. It lost all dynamic lift, and with uh, loss of about sixteen uh, percent of the lifting capacity uh, over the next twenty minutes, the ship basically slowly sank into the ocean. Uh, Seventy-four of the seventy-six crew survived. The only people who did survive did things that were not smart. One of them jumped into the water while it was still too high, and they died of falling. The other one actually survived and got outside, but then when they noticed it wasn't sinking, went back in to retrieve the personal items, and then it sank. So, yeah. Okay, so generally what you do when you when you do what's called upship, that's essentially the same as takeoff, you have water ballast, and you'll see this. What we do is we drop water ballast. Airships are meant to be done with a ground crew. It's sort of like rockets. You can't just go. We are tethered, or we, at least we would be tethered, by about 50 to 100 men or, and women would be tethering us and preventing us from lifting off the ground. They'll tug harder if the wind starts to lift us. Now, when it's time to up shift, or <laughs> A ship, they will release the lines and we will release the ballast at the same time and we will become um, positively buoyant and we will begin rising. Uh, once we've reached the altitude that we like, we can either do what's called valving off, which is where you release extra uh, helium, or if you've not filled up enough, you'll eventually reach your pressure altitude and then you won't go up. So in order to simulate that, we need the heavy tanks or, or the heavy, uh, heavy situation. And this is where the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator Unrealism kind of uh, comes into uh, effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to open the knee board because that has some custom checklists that I specifically wrote, right? These aren't included. Uh, you can't, can't get them with the add-on. I made them myself. I don't even know if you can see them, but I'll just read them off anyway. So make sure your auto rudder is uh, activated. Uh, you can actually simulate, if I press the period key, which will release us from the ground. Okay, we're getting, <laughs> uh, starting to go away, I see. Uh, that's very strange. Like I said, results may vary. You know, we don't have any... Uh, strange. We don't have any wind, and for some reason we're being pushed forward as if we did have wind. Uh, well, I guess you can do that for forward, but if you want to go back, you can do a shift P, and that will give you a nice little pushback, and that can simulate, you know, the ground cool crew walking you back. So right now, this kind of simulates hundreds of uh, men and women basically moving us backwards, right? So they're, they're taking... Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, that wasn't the same guy. Interesting. Oh, yeah, he's bouncing, too. That's kind of weird. So this is simulating people walking us out, right? And then when you get where you want to, you just shift P again to activate the brakes so you don't go anywhere. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add all nine buoyancy settings to go to maximum buoyancy. So uh, for that, you're going to want to press F8, and uh, that's going to add nine... Um, 
So we're going to go ahead and do that now by pressing F8. And uh, we'll have a nice little sound with it. So what we're doing now is we're valving off, right? All that extra helium is, is now being vented through the system and out into the atmosphere. Okay, so now we're, we're now fully, uh, fully heavy buoyant. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to release uh, the brakes and add power just enough to start ascending and that will uh, basically simulate dropping the water ballast and we'll go outside to view that, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and tell the ground crew to release the ropes. That's the period key. And now we're going to add enough fuel to start rising. Okay, and we are going up. Because we're departing from Newark, our field elevation is zero. So we're going to wait until we reach about 600 feet elevation. And then we're going to start releasing the buoyancy settings, which is going to be very similar to uh, releasing the water ballast. I guess we kind of missed it. I can't see any water going out. It's too bad. Okay, so we should be getting pretty close to 600 feet. Actually, now we're at about 250. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue ascending. And then uh, I think I'm going to turn. Yeah, I'm going to turn that radio off. Figure out how to turn this thing off using the radio controls. looks like the C key. Next time I hear that, I'm going to press C. And what this is going to simulate is uh, the... Um, what the heck? Be quiet. It's not working. How do I turn the comm radio off? Ah, X. Be quiet. Unbelievable. Um, I don't know how to tune this. Maybe we can tune to a uh, a small airport. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully that'll make things quiet now for us. Okay, looks like we're about uh, 600 feet now. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to uh, increase our buoyancy to the light position. And what this is going to simulate is uh, starting to release a little bit more helium. Or if you have a hybrid airship, changing our uh, thrust vector. Each time we do this, we want to remove a little bit of, of thrust so that we don't lurch forward. And as we start to do this, uh, we will start uh, our speed, airspeed rather, should start ticking up. And uh, if I remember correctly, which I don't, okay, there's our airspeed right there. We're doing about uh, seven knots. I love these gauges, by the way. If, if, if I could have my gauges designed a specific way, this is exactly what I would be looking for. Okay, let's just keep reducing these settings now. And now by the time you reach about the third setting, our airspeed should start to really rise. Now we're at about uh, 15 knots. Cruising speed in the USS Macon is uh, about 55 knots. So there's uh, position 5.
Okay. Now it looks like we're going a little bit too slow for this. So I'm going to start adding power gently. And you need to do it gently because uh, otherwise, you know, we weigh about 10 pounds. So if you add power suddenly, it would be unrealistic. And because this is a little bit of an airplane, we do have to get some forward speed in order to prevent sinking into the ground. So we should really be up to about uh, 30, 40 knots before we start decreasing any more here. So I'm only about 50% throttle, but you'll see, you know, the throttles are already showing up as full, which is kind of unrealistic. At this point, we're probably only at two thirds. Okay, we're over 30 knots now. So I'm gonna retract another uh, setting. Did you know that the Empire State Building was actually designed as a airship mooring mast? That's where we're gonna go. So if you want to turn the ship, you twist the joystick or you press num pads one and three. That controls your elevator. Let's go ahead and uh, take us all the way out now. We're above 40 knots now. Got a nice healthy speed. Okay, one to go. Okay, and we're pretty close to cruising speed right now. So something you might notice now is uh, we're incredibly slanted. So we have two controls. We have a rudder, which I just demonstrated, right? You twist left to go left and you twist right to go right. There are no ailerons. The other control that you have is pitch. When you are, uh, when you are steering, you can use the helmsman position by pressing A, and here's your compass to steer by. Now, when you're using the elevator, uh, you need another instrument right here, and that is the, uh, the compasses. So right now we have about 15 degrees, which is getting pretty close to the uh, region where you don't want to be. Uh, 20 to 25 is, is really the cutoff. So so it's just like an elevator in an airplane, right? Just up and down. So we're going to uh, decrease it a little bit here and we're gonna level off. This is generally how uh, airships will gain altitude once airborne. Uh, but uh, we've pretty much reached our flight altitude now. They generally cruise pretty low. Um, this airship is uh, magnificently gifted with high altitude. If we want to, we can actually valve off until we reach 26,000 feet. That's our ceiling. If we do that though, we'll need some oxygen tanks. Okay, so we will go ahead and uh, start turning towards the Empire State Building. And then I'll explain a few other things. There are actually autopilots which simulate uh, having uh, a helmsman or elevator man because uh, in real life there, there would be a captain directing these two guys and one of them is a rudder man, the other is an elevator man. And if you note, they're actually, uh, the, the uh, rudder man is uh, positioned perpendicular to the direction of motion as is the uh, elevator man uh, positioned perpendicular to the ship's uh, the, the ship's pitch which allows them uh, minute detection of based on visual cues what the status of the ship is So in the back, we have uh, 
the helium controls, right? How you would actually valve off further back. You have the radio stack. Uh, we've got a chart table too, which will actually um, allow us to view where we are. Going right over the Statue of Liberty. Here we go. Here's the chart table. And the, um, the ship's position will actually update based on where we are. Which is pretty handy. So it shows us heading right for uh, New York City. Uh, there is an emergency control station in the airship. It's that big. If you look in the tail... Right here in the tail, there is an additional control station. And you can fly the ship there if something goes wrong with the primary station, like it falls off the ship. To my knowledge, that's never happened before. Going a little bit slow here. Cruising speed's 55. Maximum speed is 75. Okay, what else can we talk about the uh, airship? We've got a uh, roll indicator here. And uh, in real life, the only way to control that is by adjusting the heliums in the six, the six gas cells on the left versus the six gas cells on the right. You're adjusting your gas to make sure that the ship basically has zero roll. There's no real reason why you would want that. Um, over here you have some settings. This is pretty much meaningless to us. Um, it's a chalkboard, and the captain would write his orders on this chalkboard. The uh, fuel settings are over here, and ability to dump ballast and whatnot. Uh, it's a really handy pull switch doesn't have any function though to us uh, neither do these here this is I believe controls water ballast these are your throttles which only half work unfortunately we have a uh, dysfunctional clock if I remember correctly I don't don't believe that one works let's see I showed you the chart table uh, you have the radio stack uh, valve stations. Uh, you also have, I forget what superheat is. I think it has something to do with the compartments further back. Uh, the elevator man also has a compass, which is kind of handy. Oh, wow, we're kind of going downwards. Might want to correct that before I, uh, before I scare everybody again. Okay. Um, let's see, over here we have the precise elevator angle and the starboard and port trim indicators, which are pretty handy. Uh, you have nav lights that you can turn on and off. You also have the uh, cabin light that you can activate. I believe that's the L key. You have an altimeter here. We have another altimeter. Uh, we also have a vertical speed indicator, which is pretty helpful. And then, uh, of course, your airspeed indicator is there. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So, let's, uh, I think there's a way to, let's see, that's the emergency station. No, there's not. We'll just have to look down, make sure uh, we're clearing buildings. I think what we'll do is we'll we'll pass over the Empire State Building. Uh, I don't have much a uh, much a uh, inventory on for today. It's sort of just explaining how this works. Okay, I've set a course for the Empire State Building, and I'm going to reduce a little bit of elevator. So we've picked up uh, a little bit of roll, two to three degrees of roll. So in Flight Simulator, you can actually work the ailerons, even though I said you don't have them. so. If we roll to the right, this should, over the course of about 30 seconds, disappear. So I think we're still, uh, yeah, we're still doing about 55 knots, which is cruise. Oh, here's, here's the gas control here. 
So each of these would be to valve off, and uh, the other ones would be to um, bring more gas in from the actual airship itself. Let's demonstrate a few other views. This ship has a lot of them. It's also going to get loud, so I might not be able to talk. Okay, so that's the control cab. That's us, right? We drive the ship from in here. This is the gunner's nest. It is the top of the airship. In uh, the book Airborne, the, uh, the, the main character is a, uh, a cabin watchman. Uh, he's a cabin boy. And, uh, oh, hello. He's getting kind of close. And, and he was up on top of the airship. And you can grapple yourself to, to the, the nest here and go walk out on top of the airship. It's pretty cool. Uh, our port props and our starboard props. This is looking backwards directly underneath. We can actually lower a trapeze here. They can have a Curtis F9C Sparrowhawk on there. And this is a view from inside the actual hangar itself. Pretty cool, huh? And that's the emergency control station. Okay, we're getting pretty close to the Empire State Building, so let's simulate a uh, approach. So you start by uh, decreasing your throttle settings and adding buoyancy settings. And again, when the Empire State Building was designed, it was designed to be a airship mast. Nobody knew that the airplane would become the actual preferred method of air travel. Okay, so now what would have to happen is on the front, there would be a cabin cruiseman out on the front of the ship and check this out. There is a bow gangway that will open where someone can drop a line onto the Empire State Building and that would allow us to moor to the Empire State Building. So the whole time you're going to be degreasing your speed until you, you basically uh, become attached. So unfortunately, mooring is not simulated. We can't actually moor to the Empire State Building, but this is how it would be done if we could do it. The line would get dropped onto the tower and anchored off, and then we would be lowered down on a guide rail to the, to the high plaza where um, our passengers, if we had some, could deboard. And then uh, when it's time to leave, they'd cut us loose. There would always be some wind, and we'd kind of drift away from it. Then you can begin adding settings here. Or you can be aggressive and just do it all at once, but you have to stay on your toes.
So yeah, don't do that because it's not realistic. You got to do it slowly in order for it to be realistic. So yeah, like like I was saying, the Empire State Building was actually believed to have been designed to be an airport. And and then uh, we decided that airplanes were actually going to be the better method of air travel. So uh, as I was saying, the Airborne book uh, and series uh, is set in a world where airships really did come to, to be the number one method of air travel and uh, airplanes just didn't do it. Um, it's set in about probably 1950 to 1960 in uh, the last golden age of exploration. Uh, they basically end up in a uh, pirating situation and um, wind up at the mercy of these uh, airship pirates. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, if you've ever, you've ever liked uh, flying ship pirates, this is basically the book for you. Um, we're going to head out over the uh, Hellgate Bridge right now. I can recognize that. And then uh, we're, we'll turn south to, uh, I think it's LaGuardia. Yeah, that looks like LaGuardia. And uh, then I will explain how to land the airship over LaGuardia. So I'm going to pull up the knee board again. Uh, not sure if you can see it, but I'll read everything on here. Okay, on our approach, we're going to try and get two to three hundred feet above the field. First, we need to figure out precisely where we want to land. Um, it's preferred to land in a grassy area preferably away from the terminal. So uh, we'll probably go for the big paved area, actually. There's not much grass. So LaGuardia is going to be pretty low, probably about 40 feet elevation. So we want to land uh, probably about two, 250 um, feet above the, above the airstrip where we prepare to do our landing. So that's Hellgate Bridge, uh, and, and heading down there into uh, Sunnyside Yard is the uh, Northeast Corridor, actually. I think the best views are from the, yeah, definitely from the elevator, or the, uh, the helmsman. You basically see things as you go right over them. Okay, let's make our turn to LaGuardia, and I'm going to start really reducing throttle here. I want to lose some altitude. I'm also going to pitch down, which should expedite our descent. We want to be about uh, two, 300 feet above, the, uh, above sea level. And then uh, when we reach 40 knots, uh, we're going to start adding buoyancy settings again. And what that's going to simulate is valving off air. So we'll, we'll start losing altitude because we don't have enough helium to fly. Okay, I'm going to go for, for that, that big area over the water, so, or just past the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach from the, um, I guess it's the west. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to approach from the west. We're actually below 40 knots now, so we should be about um, to setting three. So what we're doing now is we're releasing our helium.
And we're doing it the way it meant to be done, right? We're not dropping 50 knots in one second. So as you do this, you want to start adding a little bit of power to counteract the, the fact that it's it's really flaps. So uh, make sure we're low enough. No, we're still at about 800 feet, so we're going to pitch down quite a bit here. We still, still have enough forward speed to be able to do this. Once you lose all your forward speed, you can't do this. All right, we should be down to about, um, yeah, 30 knots. We're going to go to position four or five now. And basically, when we get really close here, when we get to that taxiway, the idea will be to get that to come right to the base of the helmsman. And you need to adjust your glide slope until you reach that. Okay, we're around um, setting five. Looks like we should be a little bit closer to about six. We should be uh, making our turn fairly soon. Uh, remember that the air, the air flight control services are significantly dampened the slower we move. So you will lose that in a real airship. All right, we're down to 15 in position six. By the time we get into nine, we should be doing about three to four. I'm going to go to seven and begin my turn. So now, when you come down in an airship, two things can happen. You can drop ropes, or you can drop ropes with people on them. And both will help anchor you to the ground. Alright, I'm really reducing throttle now. We want to be in about position 8 now. This should give us a forward speed of about uh, seven or eight. Just make sure that you don't rise. Certainly don't want to be rising when you're landing an airship. I think seven's about where we want to be right now, actually. Whoops, I went to nine. There we go. Yep, and you see how we're kind of sinking a little bit more? It seems like seven's pretty much the sweet spot for us right now. Again, the, the real thing is just to gauge the glide slope and make sure that you're moving at a good pace. You know, we're at 10. When we need to slow down, we're going to um, reduce the throttle. And then when we, when we start getting close to the surface, then we're going to start adding, um, start adding buoyancy settings here. So yeah, just keep keep adding a little bit more left y'all to get us over the runway, or at least our landing area. And I'm going to start reducing power even more now. And again, just know that as you reduce power, um, you need to um, just know that you're going to lose the air flight control services uh, effectiveness. Uh, and in addition, if there were a wind sock we would need to land according to the wind, but I know I, I set zero wind, so we don't have to worry about the wind. All right, I want to start losing some altitude now, so I'm going to really start to reduce this. We're going too slow now for... Um, for the pitch to really be able to help us at all, or the ele the uh, elevators for that matter.
Going to eight. Bringing power really low. Maybe that's a bit too low. So, again, always land into the wind with an airship. Always, always, always. You will not be able to land if you don't land into the wind. Kind of hard to figure out exactly where the stinking thing is. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, well, that's no help. Aha, there we go. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell where you are, but it looks like we're pretty much over our landing site right about now. Getting pretty close. Uh, elevation's getting down. So you know what? We're going to go to 9 and actually raise just a little bit of power here. Okay, going to 9 and raising just enough power to uh, keep us from slamming into the ground. Getting really close now. And we're going to touch at 5 knots. Uh, there's nothing we can really do about that. That's just part of the design of the system in Flight Simulator. You can't you can't deal with anything, or you can't deal with that, unfortunately. All right, level level, uh, just about three to four knots. That's exactly where we want to be touching down, and I can see my desired touchdown point coming right in front of us. So we basically wait until we hit the ground, and then hit the parking brake, which is control period and that simulates the ground crew hopping down off of the airship. There we go. Okay, touch and press period. The ground crew has taken control of the airship. Uh, at this point, I also like to push slash. Don't know if it does anything, the spoiler, but anything to keep us from uh, bouncing around more. And that's it. We are now safely back on the ground. Um, pretty much exactly where we wanted to land. I didn't know how long this landing strip was, so I wanted to get the control car right at the end of this triangle. And I think I got it pretty close. Right about here is probably where I wanted to touch down, so that's about uh, maybe 50 feet off. Not too bad. And just like a uh, just like an airplane, you can control shift F1 to shut the engines down. And now you can hop off. So that's it for the tutorial. Um, I think I've pretty much told everything I know. Uh, if, it, if, if people request more uh, episodes or more tutorials, I can always do them. Uh, otherwise, as, as far as I'm concerned, um, I've pretty much covered everything. So thank you guys for joining me, and I will see you guys for the next episode. Bye-bye.